Saints, keep your kids involved. Keep your kids involved. Keep your kids involved. Because if you don't, they'll grow up unbalanced. Because here's what they're going to hear at school. They're going to hear ideologies, teachings, doctrines, speculations, surmisings, and conclusions that are contrary to what you believe. And if they hear all these things, and if they hear, they never hear the other side, your child will grow up warped, and you will be the blame because you didn't put them in a place where they heard the other side. You don't want your little boy growing up believing that it's all right for him to think he's a woman. Do you? Do you? That's not a, that's not an empty that's not a rhetorical question. Amen. And the only way to fight some of these things is to uh, make sure that they are put in a position where they can at least where they can hear the other side. The devil understands the power of indoctrination and words. I wish more parents understood it. See, I wish more parents understood it. Our opponents are patient. They have a long-term, long-range plan to cloud the minds of our children. We got to have a long-range plan to make sure our children are filled with the light of the gospel and the truth of the Bible. Amen. The other day, the quarterback, Drew Brees, came under fire. Oh, they came after Drew, quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. You know what Drew Brees did? He did something that offended the LBGTQ community. Mother Turner, he offended them. Did he use a, uh, a slur? He didn't. Did he call one of them out of their names? He didn't. Did he suggest that you kill a homosexual or a lesbian or somebody like that? He didn't. He didn't say any of those things. You know what he said that offended them? He, as a citizen with free speech and all that, like the rest of them, all the rest of them talk, he just encouraged kids to bring their Bible to school on Bring Your Bible to School Day. That offended the LBGTQ community. So then what does that tell you what they think of the Bible? I love this. Man. Another player on the New Orleans Saints was fined $7,000. He did something awful. He did something, a black guy, he did something awful. He put on a headpiece, which would be in, not seen through the helmet, that said something obscene across the forehead. You know what it was? The, you know why he got fined for $7,000? The obscene message was, man of God. You get fined $7,000 for putting on a scarf that says, man of God. Now you're going to put the helmet on the scarf. <laughs> so, so you probably won't, they won't see it anyway. Man of God. And then Cam can wear a scarf and look like a woman and no and no fine no fine a man a black man can dress up like a woman and not get fined a brother put man of god on and get fined there's something wrong amen there is something wrong and by the way by the way by the way lest you uh say uh, uh bishop wooden is you know this is one homophobic guy I want to tell you all that 
uh, the psychotherapist George Weinberg died in um, um, 2017. He's the psychotherapist who just made up the term homophobia. It's not even a real term. He made it up. He made it up in the 60s, around 1965. And here's what inspired him. He said, as the psychotherapist, these are the facts, he noticed that some of his psychotherapist friends and colleagues were, now listen to this, uncomfortable around homosexuals. Not violent, not mean, not insulting, not demeaning, not vicious, just uncomfortable. And so since they were uncomfortable, he created a term to categorize them, to accuse them of having a phobia. A phobia is a unnatural or a unreasonable fear. So because they were uncomfortable with homosexuality, he made up a term called homophobia. Now, as a grown man, I'm 58 years old, I'm a grown man. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown heterosexual male. I'm a grown, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost man. Amen. I'm a grown man. Did I say I was a grown man? I'm a grown man. And I am, as a grown man, uncomfortable with being around a man who views me as a potential sex partner. I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that man. Yes, I am. Now, I'm not going to hit that man. I'm not going to try to get that man fired. I'm not going to, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to bake a cake for him either. I'm not going to give that man special privileges. But I tell you what, I would be the first to come to that man's rescue if somebody was trying to fight that man or hurt that man simply because that man is a homosexual. You, you can't do that. That's wrong. But am I uncomfortable? Yeah. I wouldn't know how to take it. If, I'm, if that man said to me, I like your necktie, I don't know what he's saying. What, 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 what do you mean by that? I said, man, those are some bad shoes you have on. Okay, what are you saying? Because he views me like a woman views a man. Now, brother, if you are comfortable around a man who can look at you and size you up sexually and possibly see you and him getting it on, I'm uncomfortable with you because there's something wrong with you too. You have to put that stuff out here because I want to show you the origin of these things because the word uncomfortable, it gives no description. So now homophobia is treated like an official designation. It is a real, actual uh, uh, condition. It is a real pathology. Yes, there's something wrong with them when the the truth is that the term was all made up. It's not even real. Praise the Lord. It was a word made up to, de to describe a non-existing condition. And now you have saints running around afraid to be called homophobic. And the definition is so broad, you got to be one. You got to be homophobic because the definition is too broad. It's so broad, it includes everything. Congressman John Lewis floated an idea in Congress the other day threatening to yank the 501c3 status from nonprofit groups that oppose homosexuality. He did not explain what oppose means. That's too broad. 
This is too broad. This is what's going on in the world today. Amen. And as your man of God, as your watchman on the wall, it is my calling, it is my job to point these things out.